Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU wins right to sue Reynolds American for money laundering. Hungary is becoming the biggest reason why we have to leave the European Union. And evaluation of European Union's finances. EU said to back more energy state aid in concession to industry. Plus, European Union Court rejects requirement to keep data of telecoms users. It's Monday, 28th of April. Thanks for joining me. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. The EU wins right to sue Reynolds American for money laundering. Reynolds American, maker of Camel cigarettes, could be sued by the European Union over claims it orchestrated a worldwide scheme to launder drug money, a US federal appeals court ruled in reviving an action filed more than a decade ago. The EU could use United States racketeering law to sue Reynolds American, a three-judge panel of the court ruled to reverse a lower court judge's decision to dismiss the suit. The lawsuit was filed by the European Community, which was legally replaced by the European Union in 2009. Now, the EU claims Reynolds American directed a scheme in which Colombian and Russian criminal organisations laundered drug profits through European money brokers. The brokers allegedly sold discounted euros obtained from drug sales to cigarette importers, who then purchased Reynolds American cigarettes from wholesalers, according to the complaint. There are some interesting questions to be asked about the timing of this case, which has been ongoing for more than 10 years. Andrew found this reported in the South China Morning Post, but it's worth watching to see what the mainstream Western press do with it in light of the current US-EU-Russian tensions. We'll keep you posted. Hungary is becoming the biggest reason why we may have to leave the EU. There's a really interesting article taking a high-altitude view of how and why EU and IMF restructuring in European Union accession states causes such decimation with the people on the ground. The article says, Revanchist nationalists of different stripes have just won 65% of the vote in post-democratic Hungary. The mystical Jew-baiting Jobbik party increased its share to 20%, so no doubt we will see more of its Magyar Garda rallies and Arrow Cross nostalgia. The Fidesz ruling party and serial violator has a seemingly unbreakable grip over the governing machinery of a mid-sized EU state in the heart of Central Europe. It has harassed the media, and we mean seriously, not just like Leveson. It's purged the judiciary and muzzled the opposition by banning paid TV advertising and greatly restricting campaign access to the public networks, even though it has flooded the airwaves with its own message. Now, let us not forget that Hungary has handed out Hungarian passports to many of the 500,000 Hungarians of the Magyar diaspora, caught on the wrong side of the border with Slovakia, well, then Czechoslovakia, after the disintegration of the Habsburg Empire and the Treaty of Trianon in 1920, politically. If not legally, it is a contested border, like Crimea until last month. So, for those of us who remember the great hopes pinned on Hungary 20 years ago and the landslide re-election of Fidesz leader Viktor Orban after all he has done in office finishes off all illusions. Something has gone very wrong in Hungary, says Charles Grant from the Centre for European Reform. Indeed, and one of the reasons is the destructive effects of the Economic Monetary Union and the Euro convergence play that has caused such damage in Central and Eastern Europe over the last 15 years. In Hungary's case, it led to a flood of cheap capital into the country, a fiscal bubble and an erosion of competitiveness. It also led to a rush into the Euro and Swiss franc mortgages and business debt, which blew up once the bubble burst and the foreign crashed. Now, this has since been followed by EU IMF rescues, austerity packages and years of a quasi-slump, all made worse by the rolling disaster of the broader EMU debt deflation crisis. It makes you wonder what will happen to Spain, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, 
and Portugal, all of whom are being oppressed with heavy fiscal and political measures. There's much, much more detail in the article on our website, and I encourage you to take a read. The links are below. Evaluation of the union's finances. Our research team have dug out another nugget from the dusty catacombs of the Bruswellian Babylon, that is the European Parliament. This report evaluates the results achieved from EU spending programmes. The report is critical of the fact that instead of focusing on the main achievement of the EU's main objectives and the effectiveness of its policies, the Commission provided a range of evaluation summaries covering EU programmes in all policy areas of expenditure under the current multi-annual financial framework. Now, according to the current budget headings, the Court of Auditors found that the second and third evaluation reports lacked sufficient and reliable evidence of what the union's policies had achieved for use in the discharge procedure. Now, the report urges the Commission to use specific information on the achievements of member states in its evaluation on the financial achievements of the European Union. The article goes on to detail recommendations for change, and this may result in further legislative proposals, which of course our research team will highlight if and when it gets presented. E said to back more energy state aid in concessions to industry. The European Union, under pressure from Germany, will allow more generous state aid to 65 energy-intensive industries than earlier planned to help with the costs of boosting renewable sources, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. So the European Commission, the EU's regulatory arm, will approve support in the form of cuts in environmental taxes if the beneficiaries cover at least 15% of the additional costs, compared with the previous Lee proposed 20%. Now, according to people who asked not to be identified because the talks aren't public, the provisions will be included in state aid guidelines for 2014 to 2020, which to be adopted today. The guidelines will define state support rules to help spur renewables as nations, including Germany, seek tools that would shield industry from the rising power bills during the EU's shift to a low-carbon economy. Now, whether or not the UK government will have the wherewithal, or indeed even be aware at all, with regard to how it might leverage this relaxation of EU state aid rules is, well, debatable. Certainly the Hinkley C reactor could be looked at with regard to this legislative change, although we feel it unlikely the structure of the investment vehicle will be changed, which is just another massive missed opportunity to improve the UK asset balance sheet and provide a better and longer return for taxpayers. Now, this initiative also incentivizes further investment to JET, the joint European Taurus, the experimental fusion reactor, which promises limitless carbon-free energy. But sadly, it's unlikely to happen as the initiative has been taken away to France in the form of the ITER, or ITER project. The EU state aid legislation breaches the idea of free market capitalism by distorting the market in favour of private corporations, which inhibits competition through what I call a bureaucratic fascism. And in the case of fundamental services such as energy, finance, health and generic services such as postal services, then it can be clearly shown to have done far more harm than good. Any initiative designed to review and restrict it must therefore be considered positive. EU court rejects requirement to keep data of telecoms users. The European Union's highest court on Tuesday overthrew a rule that required telecoms companies to store the communications data of EU citizens for up to two years on the grounds that it infringed on basic rights. Brussels introduced the Data Retention Directive in March 2006 after bombings on public transport in Madrid and London. The aim was to give the authorities better tools to investigate and prosecute organised crime and terrorism. But not all countries, including Germany, where privacy is an especially sensitive issue, have implemented the directive. They could have faced penalties if the court had upheld the rule requiring companies to store data for six months to two years. The court ruled that the directive exceeded the limits of proportionality. The court takes the view that by requiring the retention of those data and by allowing the competent national authorities to access those data, the directive interferes in a particularly serious manner with the fundamental rights to respect for private life and to the protection of personal data. 
Well, we absolutely agree. Of course, we suspect the NSA and GCHQ won't be so receptive. But it's good to see the Brazilian bureaucrats doing something in favour of the people for once. One. Heads up, folks, we have another live interactive table talk show that you can get involved with later this week. We're going to be taking a look at the European elections, which are to be held on May 22nd. Now, this will include looking at candidates' profiles for the new president of the European Commission. Oh, those are the ones that you can't vote on, by the way. We'll be looking at the structure of the European parliamentary system and hoping to unravel how it works. I mean, it's always helpful to actually know what you're voting for. And how do the mainstream national parties' campaigns relate to Europe? Now, we really want to hear from you. We want to include and try to answer your questions. And so please do email those in to us via the contacts page on our website. Now, we're also looking for guests to join us on the show. You'll need a Google Plus account, webcam and microphone. And the show preparation starts at 11.30am UK summer time. And the show goes live to the front page of our website and on YouTube at 12 noon and runs until 1 o'clock. Uh, we're all done and dusted by 1.15. So what are you waiting for? Take a look at the help page in our resources section for details of how you can join and become a member of the panel. Now, there will also be a phone and SMS text line available, and Sue will be on hand when the lines open to take your calls, and better still, you can text your comments and questions into the same number. Of course, you can comment via Twitter by mentioning at the E unit in your post. Now, this is only the second live show we've done. We fully expect there to be still some teething issues, and we hope you'll stick with us as we iron those out. We are bringing you these shows via a state-of-the-art medium, and you know what they say about technology. Now, this week in our video library, we have several short films, all relating to the European Union elections. And these include National Party campaign party political broadcasts and the presidential campaign broadcasts by the candidates for the European Commission. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. And join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.